Hi, I'm Doug Young. I'd like to take a quick look at a mic from Townsend Labs uh, that has some interesting features for guitarists and that I would think would be especially useful if you're recording at home where you have to be both the recording engineer and the performer at the same time. The mic is called the Sphere L22 and it's a modeling mic. It's intended to model or emulate other microphones. And these mics range from everyday microphones that you may have, like the Shure SM57, all the way up to relatively rare, more exotic, and definitely more expensive microphones that you probably only see in a high-end recording studio. The L22 is a large diaphragm mic with a pair of back-to-back -back capsules, which you can see through the grill here. Uh, the mic comes with a very solid storage case and a mic clip, which I'm using here, as well as a shock mount. The mic does have uh, two modes, mono or stereo, and we're going to take a look at both. But in both cases, you need to record two channels to a stereo track. But one of the things I think is especially cool about the L22 is that Townsend allows you to manipulate a lot of the elements that go into the modeling aspect of these microphones. And it gives us a lot of power to tweak our sound. And what's really interesting and useful is that you can do it yourself after you record. So rather than trying to set up mics while you're recording and get in every detail correctly, we can get the mic set up pretty well, and then we can do some final tweaking, controlling a surprising number of things after the fact using the modeling software. So let's keep watching to see how that works. Now the mic requires a special cable with a 5-pin XLR that plugs into the mic, and then it breaks out into a pair of 3-pin XLR cables, standard mic cables. To use the mic, we'll record the output of both capsules, and then Townsend uses that information from both capsules to create the different models. So let's start by checking out the mic acting as a single mono mic. I'm going to place the mic about a foot out aimed at the neck body joint, uh, with the mic facing towards me now. And let me try a short strummed example, and then we'll check out how this works on the computer as we work with the track. Let's take a look at our results and how we can manipulate the recording after the fact. You can see that we have a stereo recording here. The left side is louder than the right side. That's because the left capsule was aimed back at the guitar and the right capsule was aimed away from the guitar. So it's to be expected and the software uses that information in creating the model. I've set up this plugin with a Neumann M49 model. Every model has a little information panel, which is kind of cool. You can read about the specific mic that was modeled and a little bit about what, uh, what it does. We see here that we have a bunch of polar patterns. By default, they've got it set to cardioid, but we can go through a, a whole bunch of different options. Let's listen to what it sounds like with just the cardioid pattern. Let's go to a different model. You can see here that we have a lot of different mic models. Uh, let's take a look at a mic that has some relatively interesting behavior. Uh, by the way, you notice uh, the polar pattern here changes in the display to the right as we move through these different polar patterns. It also changes as we go between mic models. So even if you're in cardioid, you'll see that different cardioid mics have slightly different polar patterns, and you can see that reflected in the model. But let's take a look at a ribbon mic in figure eight because it's got a couple interesting characteristics. First of all, this mic is going to have a lot more proximity effects. Let's listen to how that works. Ribbon and mics are bassier, but they also have more uh, proximity effect. But of course here we can control that using the plug-in. We can also see what it's like to rotate this mic uh, virtually. We can rotate the axis of the microphone. And with a ribbon mic and a figure eight pattern, there's a null right in the middle of the mic. And ribbon mics are especially known for having a very deep null where the sound almost goes away. So let's check it out and see if that's true here. Yeah, and indeed, we're modeling the behavior of a ribbon mic. So there's a whole lot of other features here in addition to other mics, but let's go on and look at the stereo mode and we'll explore some more features. So as I mentioned, this mic can also be used as a stereo mic. Now all we have to do is rotate the mic so that the capsules are pointing left and right, and then we'll use a different plugin to process the stereo track that we record. So let's check that out. 
I'm placing the mic in the center of the guitar so that we get a sound that's balanced across the body and slightly above the sound hole, about even with the waist of the guitar, so that we don't get the boom of the sound hole. Let's see how this works. Let's take a look at the stereo track we've recorded and what we can do with it. You can see that we have, again, a stereo track, and this time the levels are more balanced because the capsules were pointing in opposite directions, picking up equally each side of the guitar. We also are using a different plugin. This is called the Sphere 180 plugin, and it supports left and right microphones. So I've got this set initially to using a small condenser microphone, a 451 mic. Let's hear what that sounds like. So that's not bad. We can change the polar pattern. Let's start in cardioid and I'll move this dial as it plays. Now we also have the ability to mix mics. I'm going to unlink these and we can pick a different mic. Let's pick the 49 that we were using before. So we've got a large condenser and a small condenser, which is sort of a popular setup for recording guitar because you can get a little more low end out of one side and a little, a little more crispness out of the other. Let's hear how that sounds. The difference is going to be fairly subtle there. But we can do some other interesting things in addition to picking different mic models. There's this advanced section down here, off-axis correction. And if I enable that, what happens is, first of all, the polar pattern here overrides the polar pattern for the individual mics. The thing that's important here is that it's overriding the polar pattern uniformly throughout frequency. Real microphones may say they're cardioid, directional, but that really only applies to a limited frequency range of mic that's nominally cardioid might actually be totally omni at lower frequencies. With off-axis correction, when we say cardioid, it's cardioid throughout the entire frequency range. So this is creating something that doesn't exist in the physical world and could be very useful, especially if you're trying to reduce noises from other sources or bleed from other instruments. So the other thing we've got down here is the ability to manipulate the mic's distance as well as the proximity effect. And up above, we still have the ability to change the axis of the microphone, effectively rotate the mics. So let's see how that works. Let's start out at a little bit of a distance. Hear a little more room sound. We're getting closer. Backing up, more room sound. The other thing that interacts with this is proximity effect, which we already saw a little bit of, but again, we've got the same thing here. Increased proximity. Reduced proximity. So we can experiment with distance from the microphone. We're getting maybe very close, but cutting out some of the proximity response. Let's try a couple other combinations. For example, let's try a 77, RCA 77 ribbon mic along with a, a small diaphragm mic as a extreme combination, a very deep warm sounding mic with a very bright sounding mic. And let's see what we can dial in with that. That's kind of nice. Let's just finish this up by putting a little bit of reverb on and listening to what we've got and what would could possibly be a final mix.
that's a quick look at the Sphere L22 from Townsend Labs. Uh, for more information about the mic, check out my review on AcousticGuitar.com. I'm Doug Young. Thanks for watching. Thank you.